Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. First things first, if you're new here, please subscribe, you don't have to of course, but it would really help me out and where I'm trying to get my channel to be. Okay, so does your hair bother you? Is your hair fine? Is your hair thin? Nine times out of ten, you've probably done your research already and you've probably come across something called rosemary oil. Now this has been something which I've been looking at for the last couple of months. I've been using it, I've not been using it every day, I've been using it probably weekly, sometimes between 10 days. Um, and I am here today to talk about what is the hype around rosemary oil and does it really stand up in the test on the fight against hair loss and hair fall or helping achieve grow thicker, healthier hair. A lot of people will actually have picked up on, there is a there is a trial back from, a clinical trial back from uh, 2015, which I came across. I was trying to find some evidence about this because when you look for rosemary oil, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, hype online about that it works in the same way of apparently minoxidil. Now, minoxidil is an approved medicine which is to treat hereditary hair loss. Now, of course, it's not a cure. It is to treat and help manage the symptoms of hereditary hair loss. So for a man, that stereotypical hair rising and the receding front, and then of course in the crown area, and for a lady that can be the thinning uh, throughout the top of the hair as well. Um, of course, both very distressing, but have to remember that everybody's experience with hair loss is very, very different. So no matter if somebody is labelled with androgenic uh, alopecia, forgive me for that, um, or male pattern related thing, whatever you want to call it, or female pattern related thinning, Ando, andro <laughs> generic hair loss, basically. Um, so both can be devastating, both can affect your confidence, and both are just real damn right nasty to deal with. So I've done my research on this particular trial which I came across, uh, was back from 2015. It looked at a group of people and it divided them in two, and one very randomized, um, but one group of people used rosemary oil and one group of people used minoxidil. So we're going to be talking about that as well. But first things first, my experience with rosemary oil. So rosemary oil, I have bought a couple of months ago. And first of all, I thought I'd be cheeky. And I thought that I would try and use it potent in its potent raw form on my scalp. Never ever do that. It's far too strong. It really, really irritates your scalp um, and it can start to sort of give you, even can make it quite sore. Um, I started using it sort of in the areas of concern for my hair and rather than notice any hair growth, um, increased hair growth or, or enhancement of my hair, um, it was really starting to agitate my scalp and in the areas I was using it, it was just no go. Um, and it was a product which I left well alone. The product I bought, um, I think that was from Holland Barrett's here in the UK, nothing wrong with the product at all, absolutely stunning smell, very stimulating, very awakening, energizing, but just far too strong for me, so I put it away. It wasn't until I'd done some research and it had to be mixed with a carrier oil. So then, um, because I think I, I knew that anyway, but I I'd seen a couple of people using it um, online in their raw form and thought that I would be able to do that as well, but no, I couldn't. Um, and I had done my research and I did know that it was out there and that uh, there was a clinical uh, trial which looked at it in comparison to the use and the benefit of minoxidil as well for, let's see if I can get it right, androgeneric, there we go, <laughs> alopecia. Um, so which both men and women are uh, affected by. But of course, if you're just looking at it as to enhance your scalp environment, your hair growth, then uh, a really great natural oil to use, but please, please, please use it with a carrier oil. So I bought this, I reckon about two months ago now, and barely any of it's gone, to be quite honest. It's about, well, I say barely any, we're about a third through on here. And this is from Boots. So a lot of my subscribers will know I buy a lot of my products, uh, which I review here on this channel from Boots here in the UK. Um, and if I don't there, there's online. Um, and I really, really like this product here. It's rosemary oil. It says it's rosemary oil on the front here. Um, and then it's We've got nourishing for scalp and hair. But if I look on the back, I can straight away tell you that inside here, it's not just rosemary oil. There is carrier oils in here as well. And in here, we've got olive fruit oil. We have got sunflower seed oil. And we have got sweet almond oil, as well as, of course, the rosemary leaf uh, oil in here as well. So we've got those carrier oils. So don't make that mistake, which I did. Um, now, how do we use it? So I use this once a week, maybe once once every 10 days. And to be honest, I don't really go too much further than that. Sometimes I might use it twice within that period, but it comes, this comes from, um, I didn't pay very much for this. Uh, I don't think it was even 10 pounds. It comes with a dropper. 
okay as you can probably see from here just exactly as you would expect oil to be it's got a really lovely fresh fragrance not as strong as the raw rosemary oil um in fact you can tell there's other oils in there but it's very very pleasant very moisturizing very hydrating i did find that um it really brought the shine in my hair after the first couple of uses when i used it um and what i do is i take a few drops of this oil sometimes the last thing at night um because it it, it is an oil so it doesn't stay on the hair dry. It's not something I feel you can use in the morning and then just leave it. If you had really, really thick, coarse hair, then you may well be able to use it for that. But for me, I've got fine hair. By the way, I've got half of my hair up at the back today. Um, it's sort of like I thought I'd explore like with a bit of a half up sort of half down sort of style. And I, I find it's really quite cool actually. It's um I've just had the the under the uh, undercut just put back in. So we've got some hair around down at the back here. Um, and yeah, as you can see, a band just in the back here like this so if you're wondering what has happened no i haven't cut the short the top really really short and left the back uh long so it's it's all there believe you me um so what i do is i take a few drops just throughout my hands no more than about three maybe at the very max and then just through the hands and then i just concentrate in the area so predominantly of course for men it's the hairline so i do in the hairline here and then i take it through all of my scalp up into the crown of the back here now, I always take a good time just to really, um, really knead the scalp. So that massage and that invigoration, I always feel, is really important to get the scalp awakened and really get that blood flow pumping to the follicles to really help that hair growth, to really excel uh, the hair roots and give them energy, of course, uh, throughout the scalp. And I do know that just scalp massage can really, really uh, enhance hair growth as well. So with the, the aspect of the rosemary oil, um, you've really got the added benefits of having that uh, in there when you use that on your scalp, whether you use the one I've used here or if you use a different one, just please use a carrier oil. So you've got all those great benefits. So what is rosemary oil said to do? So when I've been doing my research throughout the coming week, uh, throughout the previous weeks of me using this and just before this clip, just to make sure that I gave you the right information, it was my understanding that it excelled blood flow to the scalp, so helping nourish those follicles. Now, there's a few other bits of information out there said to him, uh, of course, the blood flow stimulating the follicles, brings energy to the scalp, excels blood flow, all of those great things. It's also said to improve the, the overall health of the follicles. So if you've got a follicle which is uh, being affected by the byproduct of uh, testosterone which is of course the cause of male pattern related thinning and female pattern related thinning that DHT that byproduct which in essence is that strangulation of the hair follicle and as it goes through that cycle it produces a more minuscule uh, miniaturized follicle over a period of time to the point where it can't create um, any more healthy hair growth to the point where the hair just can't grow anymore. So rosemary oil is said to slow that process, stop that process and improve the overall health of the hair follicle. So for me, really great. I've had great benefits of using it. For me straight off, I would say that it makes my hair feel stronger, more anchored to the scalp. In terms of regrowth, I've been using this what are we now? We are on the 2nd of May and I want to say that I've been using this coming up to three months mark on and off, maybe two and a half weeks, three months, I think, around that area, that two window I, period, I can't I find, I thought that I actually kept the receipt of it, but I, I haven't been able to find it. Um, but for me, as I say, I don't use very much of it at all, and I've used about a third of it here, so this is going to last and last and last for me. As I say, sometimes I only use this once every 10 days, sometimes I use it maybe twice a week, but to just two drops, not a lot at all lasting at night. For me, predominantly, it's throughout the hairline here. Um, so that's going to last for a long time. You wouldn't even have to use that much, I don't think, either. Of course, if you wanted to use it, I don't think you could use it every night, because I think it would be too much, because I'm always quite cautious with quite heavy oils, because I wouldn't say this is particularly light. It's quite heavy so it's quite a thick oil so it always concerns me in areas where i've got some sort of thinning um uh or concerning areas of hair um i always find that i'm just wondering would that kind of clog follicles do you know what I mean? Just enough. So I'm never too sure on that. So once a week for me is perfectly fine. I'd say if you wanted to do it once every three days, that would be great as well. So let's move on. So the, the whole science behind rosemary oil. So if you were wanting to uh, take that clinical trial is evidence to be able to say to yourself, well, actually, it says out there that it's as effective as 
2% minoxidil. So I don't know if I mentioned that prior to uh, um, me going through this clip, but the, the study was done on 2% minoxidil and it was done over a six month period. Two equal groups of people, okay. Uh, so one group used rosemary oil, the other used minoxidil. Now I wrote some points down here because it was really interesting. So it was over six months. To be honest, the overall result of the trial, I am not convinced by. Okay, but we'll come across that in just a moment. And I don't actually think that these companies should be able to say categorically that is as effective as minoxidil, which I've seen myself a lot on all different products when I've had a look at rosemary oil uh, myself as well. Um, and I just think, to be quite honest, I think it's quite silly. And I do think that we have to think that minoxidil is an approved medicine for hereditary hair loss, androgenic alopecia, male pattern related thinning, female pattern related thing, all of those things. We have to remember alopecia means hair loss, doesn't it? That term, that spectrum of hair loss for many different reasons. So I do truly believe that rosemary oil can bring an absolute benefit to our hair growth and to our scalp environment. And I think that there is an absolute benefit to be had from improving the scalp health. And I am absolutely an avid believer on that anything natural, anything sort of, um, so we don't have to go to a medicine and those effects of medicine. If we don't have to go to that first, we can use something more natural, which is more better for the body. So you don't have that uh, possibility of side effects, then fantastic. However, looking at this trial, I didn't really find that it gave me that much confidence from it. Um, so it was done over a six month period. Okay. At the end of the six month period, okay. Both groups of people had significant increase in hair growth. Okay. So that's both with the minoxidil and the rosemary oil, both had significant increase in hair growth. And this is a 2% minoxidil. Okay. So Let's go back a little bit. So hair count, there was no difference. Hair count, there was no difference at both the six month mark. Okay, so at the moment they're both on par. Okay, so, and then it also goes on to say for dry, greasy hair, okay, or dandruff, okay, there was no difference at three or six. Okay, at three or six, there was no difference. However, there was a difference between itchiness of people's scalp and that uncomfortableness. So it doesn't say uncomfortableness, it says itching. Okay, um, both at three and six and more with minoxidil as well, which I thought was very, very interesting. At the bottom of the trial, which is not actually very big, the actual, probably the writing there is probably only about like that. It's not got too much in there at all to look at. Um, bear in mind, it was a randomized trial, equal groups, Equal groups of people, rosemary oil, okay, um, minoxidil. Bear in mind, I'm not, I'm not a trichologist, I'm not a scientist or anything like this in medicine, so I'm purely just talking about my findings when I've done my research. So if I quoted this wrong, my apologies, but I don't believe I have. So just to recap, both groups of people had significant increase of hair growth. There was no difference in hair count at the end of this uh, trial at six months across the board with people. There was no difference between the groups in dry hair, greasy hair or dandruff. Okay. But there was, um, both groups had itchy scalp. Okay. At three months and at six, but predominantly more with minoxidil at month six. Um, now the bottom, I had to write this line down cause I, I thought this was, this made me laugh actually at the bottom of the trial notes because it says the findings of the present trial provided evidence with respect to the efficacy. Now, I thought that actually, well, I misread that first of all, I didn't have my glasses. I thought it was efficiency, but it's efficacy of rosemary oil, okay, in the treatment of androgenic alopecia. Right. I thought, well, efficacy. I'm quite a wordy person. I thought I'd never really come across that word. So then I went and had a look up what the direct meaning if you were to use the word efficacy, and it is. Uh, so it's the desire, um, so it's the produce the desired intent of, I think that was just quite right. Let me just, I think I just wrote over my own notes. So efficacy, the ability to produce a desired or intended result. No, I was right when I wrote it down. So I was quite surprised at that. I don't know what you thought, you think about that, but for me, 
when you see companies, okay, charging sometimes the earth for products, and let's be honest, I've reviewed some on the channel, I really have, some amazing, some not so, um, and we, when you have a look for hair products to treat hair loss, to help hair thinning, to regrow and all of this, well, if you go through hair loss, if you go through periods of your life with hair full, we're very quick to jump to something. We want something to fix it right now. But we have to slow that process down. And bear in mind, anything we try for hair growth, it will initially be a good three month period before we start to see true and real results. So we have to hold on to that. So there's never a quick fix, anything in relation to hair. I think rosemary oil on contrary to all of this is of course natural, it is nourishing, it does bring energy to the scalp and it improves the overall vitality and health of hair follicles. And I think we should keep it as that. It holds the potential to help and aid hair growth. I do not believe that we should, and a lot of people will probably disagree with me on this, but I do not believe that we should directly compare it against minoxidil because number one, most people will probably use a 5% minoxidil solution. I know for women uh, it's suggested a 2% uh, solution, I understand, because it can be uh, really quite uncomfortable, it can give you all sorts of side effects for your scalp, but minoxidil, we have to remember, is an approved medicine to treat, not cure, treat and manage hereditary hair thinning, okay? I just don't believe that we can directly compare the both. But when you think of it, most people are probably gonna be using a 5% solution. If it's if we're talking about directly men here, okay, usually a 5% solution. Of course you can use a 2% solution. Some women will use a 2% solution. And I bet there are some women out there who use a 5% solution. Everywhere, when you have a look for a hair product which has got rosemary in and it says stimulates hair growth, proven, okay, to stimulate hair growth. I'm sorry, the only trial I could find was this. And if that's the claim you're going on, that it can, it's clinically proven to stimulate and grow hair growth, bearing in mind this line, the findings of the present trial provided evidence in the respect to the efficacy of rosemary oil in the treatment of androgenic alopecia. Efficacy. I just hate that term, I really do. Um, and yeah, I think they were on par from that trial, but a 2% minoxidil, um, it doesn't really give great details about the trial, I will be honest, there may be things online which I haven't come across and other people have. Please correct me, more than happy to be corrected here. But in terms of rosemary oil, I do believe that we should probably disconnect that, that it's the same as minoxidil. And I do think we should go back to looking at it as a, an alternative, uh, product which is said to hold the potential to enhance and protect hair follicles and boost hair health not a natural uh, sort of direct um, alternative of minoxidil because that is not what it is at all um, and I do believe it is a great product and I will continue to use it throughout my hair um, I just think it's really sad that again in the in the hair industry particularly around hair thinning um, that people and even me as consumers, that you are kind of almost sucked into that and you and you read it and you think, oh, wow. But it's so important to remember just because it says that on the site doesn't necessarily mean to say that it is true. It could be a sales gimmick. It certainly could be just getting that product out there to consumers that it is purchased. Um, sadly, it is a money machine, isn't it? It really, really is. And as most people know, anybody who goes through something with hair loss, hair thinning and problems in relation to any aspect of hair care, um, it's expensive. As a man, is it expensive to keep thick hair if you are going through hair thinning? If you suffer like with I, I do, uh, stress-related hair thinning, one minute my hair can be gray, the next I can wash my hair and I can go through a stressful event a couple of weeks down the road my hair can be completely different and to keep great hair it is expensive it, it really is there are things out there you can do to help uh, keep your hair healthy and your hair growth healthy and yourself healthy of course I always say that our hair is the inner expression of good health so I would always say and I would absolutely categorically say that always that's no one's ever going to get me to change that if you notice anything in your hair and your hair is changing or you're losing more hair than usual, you're noticing something unusual for you, get it checked out with a medical professional, your family doctor, have a conversation with a pharmacist, somebody who can really just, because nine times out of 10 what's gonna happen is they will probably, just of caution, get, get some tests going, they will probably look at some blood work, they'll probably have a look, they'll probably have a discussion. There are many things, your diet, your um, 
stress, anything else going on in your life right now, hair is very, very complicated. So I urge you, if you have any issues, to have that conversation with a medical professional, because nine times out of 10, they will start the ball rolling just to explore and rule out everything. And just so you get that full sort of bill of good health and then go away, then look at what you can do to improve your own hair health and stimulate hair growth. And believe you, my friend, there is many things you can do. Some expensive, but there are some things not so, and you can always play around. And um, the internet is great, of course, for looking at the best prices of things. Um, but ultimately, if we go the avenue of minoxidil and finasteroid and one thing or another, of course, that's a tablet medication you can have. Um, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. And these high potent serums and things, they are expensive. Some amazing, some not so amazing. Um, and it can be an expensive venture. I shouldn't say that across the board it's completely expensive because for some people they can find a shampoo and a conditioner system which absolutely works for them. Other people will want to use an expensive serum. Some people won't have that, uh, that disposable income availability to do that. So therefore they have to look at other things as well. And I've been in all of those spectrums. Um, so that's 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 kind of it. And um, I do really feel that I can talk and I can comment and I can help and aid people with that as well. So on that note, if you do have any questions or anything at all, uh, at all for me below, um, please leave them down below. And um, I will do my utmost best to get back to you as quickly as I can. I've really enjoyed doing this club. I absolutely have. Um, and as I said, if there's anything else uh, I can help you with or any questions or queries, please leave them down below and I do my utmost best to get back to you as quick as I can. On that note, God bless. Thank you very much for being here. And until next time, I will see you soon. Did I say that right? I will see you soon. Bye for now.